Do you know that NVIDIA's VP just dropped a bombshell at an AI conference? Most people don't. Most people have no idea what's coming. But if you're invested in NVIDIA or any AI stocks, this could be the big game changer. And you might be thinking, Felix, NVIDIA, haven't you talked about them enough? Well, it seems there is no end to their surprises. They've been quietly revolutionizing everything from AI to healthcare and even weather forecasting. Yeah, weather forecasting, but more on that later. Now, at a recent AI summit, Bob Petty, NVIDIA's vice president, made a statement that caught my attention. He said, we're in the dawn of a new industrial revolution. Quite a bold claim. But as we'll explore today, it might not be far from the truth. And in this video, we are actually going to unpack NVIDIA's tech edge, their staggering business growth and the factors driving their success. We'll also look at some exciting new markets they're tapping into, the potential that's there, which is enormous. And of course, Winston here has been very excited about this whole topic. He sniffed out all the research himself. That dog has a very, very large nose. So here's the full quote from NVIDIA's VP. He said, accelerated computing is sustainable computing. Now, what the heck does that mean for you as an investor? Well, imagine this. Over the past decade, NVIDIA has managed to reduce energy consumption for AI model training by 2,000 times. Yeah, not a type, but 2,000 times. So they've gone from being a gas-guzzling monster truck to a sleek electric EV in just 10 years. But NVIDIA isn't just about GPUs anymore. They're taking what they call a full stack optimization approach. It's like they're not just tuning the engine, they're basically redesigning the entire car from the ground up. And that is what gives them a massive advantage in delivering AI solutions. Now, if you're new to this topic, let me introduce you to Blackwell, your new best friend for returns. It's uh, NVIDIA's latest platform. NVIDIA called it a marvel of engineering. Imagine racks of computing trays working together in perfect harmony, delivering unprecedented performance and energy efficiency. And NVIDIA is venturing into what they call intention-level computing with agentic AI. Imagine AI that doesn't just respond to commands, but proactively identifies issues and then optimizes processes. It's kind of like a super intelligent assistant that doesn't just answer your questions, but actually gives you answers before you've thought of them. That's the next level of AI. But there is more. NVIDIA is expanding into physical AI and robotics. They're using something called Omniverse to train robots virtually. It's kind of like the matrix, but for robots, you know, you're doing this. And it's going to revolutionize manufacturing and address workforce shortages. It's a little bit like what Tesla is working on, but there is more. NVIDIA is also dipping its toes into telecoms and even space exploration. They're partnering with SETI or SETI, S-E-T-I, to search for fast radio bursts in real time. And basically that's looking for, you know, ET. Yeah. Um, and I know what you're thinking. Okay, this all sounds great, but what does it actually mean for the stock price? Is it going to hit 150 or 200? Come on, get to the point. But all of this information has reiterated our thesis once more. NVIDIA isn't just a GPU company anymore. They're now at the forefront of AI, robotics, telecoms, space exploration, weather forecasting for crying out loud. And it's kind of it's this kind of innovation and diversification that has us very excited. Our teaching portfolio is up 94% this year. You want to learn how we do that? Maybe you are just dubious. I don't believe it. Well, learn my three rules and you'll be a lot smarter and you'll have a lot more consistency and you'll protect your money a heck of a lot better. What do you have to do to do that? Head over to felixfriends.org slash bootcamp and join my bootcamp next week. Simple as that. It's free of charge. Take about an hour and a half of your life and you will never quite look at the market again. That's what I promise you. So what have we got coming up for NVIDIA? Well, Jensen Huang describes the demand for Blackwell as insane. I quote, CEOs don't often use that language. So it is insane. And if we look at the numbers, it's easy to see why. Wall Street is forecasting that this chip line alone could generate around $4 billion in revenue. Let's look at Stock stock performance, okay? NVIDIA stock has been, well, it had a nice rally and it's sort of gone sort of nowhere since about June, right? 
If we look at the chart here, this is in tradevision.io, which is a tool that we built to basically uh, make Wall Street quality data available to you. And, and what does the little green line mean? Buy when it says green and exit when it says red. I think you can do better on the exits. I think our risk management system that I'll teach you on Tuesday, Felix Transit Oxford Bootcamp, will do, be do, you do a little bit better than that. But we actually managed to beat NVIDIA's performance, which is quite a hard thing, thing to do. Buy and hold, 256% up. We did an extra, uh, what is that? 18% or something, which is actually a very hard thing to do when things go up in a straight line. And guess what? We called another buy on October 8th. Now, before you run out and buy everything, bear in mind, this is just an indicator and indicators are occasionally wrong. So you have to obviously have a strategy there. But why is it calling a buy? Well, two reasons. And how do I know this? Because this is actually AI doing it because I trained it. Well, I instructed somebody much smarter to train it. Um, but we had these highs here, right? So we broke above those. We still have that one here from July and this one from June to take out, but they're not much higher. So we've taken out higher high, higher high, higher low, you know, higher low and so on. So the trend's looking pretty sweet. That was a big deal here that we took that out. As I say, there is just one, two more little bits of resistance left, and then we're back to all time highs. So am I bullish on, on Nvidia? Yes, I am. If I look at the more advanced chart, which actually gives me, seriously, real market positions, you can spy on exactly what Wall Street's doing, then how do you do that? Well, look, you look at these green lines here. The green lines are resistance on the way up. So we're trading at 130, 180 as I'm recording this, which is just slightly above the 131 resistance. 135 is next, above that, not a lot. That helps to understand where that sits. And you can go even one further if you really want to. We've got something called smart trades, which are basically dark pool trades. And you can see in here the big trades. Let's just make them the big trades only. And you can see them live from the market. So you can see yesterday, at the end of the day, there were three large trades, which are bullish. Uh, $17 million, $8 million, $2.5 million. These are all institutional trades, obviously, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be that size. So it's kind of an interesting way to spy on what Wall Street's up to. And the vast majority of Wall Street's trades are done in this, these dark pools. So we get access to it, and then we share that access to you, with you. But yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at a very nice bullish breakout here. Uh, I think Blackwell is going to deliver. But underneath it, what's really driving NVIDIA's tech leadership? Well, basically, these guys aren't just sort of keeping up with the whole AI thing. They've sort of invented it, right? Their consistent, accelerated in innovations are just way ahead of the competition. And they're timing it very sweetly. So they have this like staggered rollout of better and better and more efficient chips, which means when the new one comes out, you kind of got to buy it because it's going to save you so much in electricity, you basically have to replace the last generation. So it's this continuous cash burn for the cloud computing companies and all the big tech companies. If they want to keep up, if they want to stay ahead, they got to buy these chips. If you're Google, you got to buy them. Otherwise, you know, Microsoft is going to kick you out of business. So <clears throat> they just have this beautiful anticipatory product launch line based on insane R&D spend and just putting stuff out that's basically twice as good every single year. So the incremental improvement is so significant that you have to buy the latest thing. Otherwise, you're just like not part of the race. And that also gives NVIDIA insane pricing power because they're always saying, well, limited supply. I mean, yes, we'll scale it up, but uh, there's only so much we can make. Uh, and, and basically, it just means that all the big tech companies out there are begging for chips. And it's an insane position to be in. But what actually is even more powerful than the innovation is how they've locked in the developer crew. So anybody who's building anything AI related is essentially using NVIDIA's software and their ecosystem. So if you were to change the hardware to say AMD, then well, it wouldn't work with your software. Your software will not provide, you know, function as well. Your developers are gonna, gonna blow a casket and, 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 and go work somewhere else. So you're basically stuck. And that's gonna go on for some time. Now, at some point, the NVIDIAs and the Googles and the Amazons and Teslas will have their own chips to such a large extent, and there'll be similarish quality that they might not buy as much NVIDIA. But I still think that's years away. So this isn't really just about tech numbers. It's about tech dominance. It's about 
a very, very future-oriented product line. It's about dominating innovation and having built and building every single day this moat, this ecosystem that it's going to be really, really hard to get out of the longer you're in it. Now, I promised you a bit on weather forecasting, didn't I? And yeah, NVIDIA is literally making waves in predicting rain and shine. Welcome to NVIDIA's Earth 2 platform. It's not your sort of granddad's weather station or something. It's a cutting edge system for climate modeling and analysis. They basically build a crystal ball for the weather system. Now you might think, who cares? Well, do you know what the total addressable market is for weather prediction? Because it serves industries like agriculture, aviation, energy, transportation, insurance. It's a $21 trillion industry. <laughs> Trillion with a T. Weather forecasting really freaking matters. Now, that total addressable market is ha hard to capture. So traditional weather forecasting, like, you know, weather.com or something, it captures maybe 0.1% of that market. But if we were to get better models with better accuracy, say you capture just half a percent of the market, half a percent, which I think is pretty conservative, then you're looking at over $100 billion here in revenue. Now, given that in the last quarter they brought in 30 billion, so annualized that 120 billion, that would be double what they're currently doing. And that's a little bit more than a drop in the ocean. But there is more than just weather forecasting, healthcare. Healthcare is a $10 trillion opportunity. Yeah, trillion with a T. And NVIDIA is building Clara. Clara is a medical imaging platform. They're also building Parabricks for genomic research and Mona or Mon N A A I, M O N A I, hard to pronounce, which is an AI framework for, again, medical imaging. So they're basically building the sort of enterprise software for the healthcare industry. And what I always said about NVIDIA from the very beginning is chips are brilliant, but if you really want to make money, you need to be a software business without recurring revenue. Because at some point, the advancements in chips will slow down. Maybe not in five years, maybe not in 10 years, but at some point they will. And at that point, you want to be a software business. So you're going to get that monthly recurring revenue and therefore glorious valuations. So if NVIDIA captures, say, 5% of this 10 trillion market, which given its tech edge isn't exactly unrealistic, we're looking at $500 billion. Remember, they're bringing about $120 billion a year right now. You can see the growth opportunity, right? And healthcare, by the way, is growing. Why? Because everyone's getting older. Simple. And everyone's getting sicker because they're eating rubbish. But that's a whole nother story. So what we looked at here today, well, we looked at the Blackwell chip, which is insane. We looked at the Earth2 platform. We looked at healthcare solutions and their dominance in the AI market. And I think painted a future where their tech edge and their brilliant ability to run a business means that this business is nowhere near done growing yet, if you ask me. I think it could quite easily explode like our teaching portfolio has. We have 94% so far this year, which is not too shabby, really. So if you want to learn how we do that, and that was not because we bought NVIDIA stock, by the way, that would have been too easy. Um, lots of little trades, actually not that many. We're pretty lazy. But come and learn our three-step rules, how we, when we open a trade, how do we find it? And how do we then automate the profit-taking and the risk management? That's basically all we do. And we do that again and again and again in a couple of hours a week, and we live a very nice life. Felixfriends.org slash bootcamp and grab yourself a seat while it's still available. And if you got some value out of this video, share it with a friend. All the best. What if I told you that your favorite data company is betting big on air travel? Yes. And if you don't buy into it now, you might miss out on the biggest opportunity in the world. Well, maybe not quite. There is an interesting piece of news out here, which looks so small that it's easily overlooked, but there is actually a huge opportunity here for Palantir. So today we're going to explore Palantir's recent investment into surf air mobility. Now that investment was $1.5 million, which might not sound like a lot for a company of Palantir's size, but there's a fascinating story behind this move, 